Uh, so the agenda for today. So we're going to go through the introduction um, of who I am, um, who Metric is as a company, what Metric is as a system, how it works, um, and then we're going to actually go through uh, some live demo uh, in the testing environment for us uh, to show you uh, how you are set up your account once you once you get in. So one, we'll talk about how you get credentialed. If you haven't already been credentialed, uh, we'll talk about what you need to do as far as the admin uh, functionality, so adding your employees, um, you know, your strains, your items. Uh, your locations, all of that information, ordering tags, um, how testing will work. Uh, we'll also go through uh, packages, um, the functionality there, uh, and then we're going to dive into which is, is a process, so that's going to be really where you're living is, is the packages. So we're going to go through um, how production batches work, you know, the, you know, how you can combine different packages to one production batch, how you can take one production batch uh, and make multiple different other production batches out of it. And we'll talk through transfers, um, and then we'll, we'll uh, quickly touch on waste disposal. Um, so obviously you, you do need to use a waste disposal facility uh, in order to track all of that. Um, and then we will, uh, at the end there, uh, dive into integration with other software, kind of talk about third-party vendors um, and, and how that process works as far as we're validating them as well as uh, the information, where, where you can find the information about those integrators. Um, and then finally, we'll finish with uh, the training support. Um, so we'll kind of talk through the uh, new LMS system, the metric uh, knowledge center. So the two new platforms we have uh, for both training and support, as well as how to contact uh, metric support. So who is metric? So uh, we are a company. Uh, we started as we originally were a company called Franwell. Um, that was back in 1993, um, doing uh, RFID tracking, uh, supply chain tracking. Uh, so we have over 25 plus years of, of doing this. Um, in 2013, we actually um, started with Colorado. Um, so we were part of the seed to sale tracking provider uh, for uh, Colorado when they first implemented. Um, and from there, um, we, we've uh, gained uh, over 20 states here. Um, and everything we do as far as the software design, hardware, solutioning, help, and support, that's all in-house. So that's all met. Anytime you're talking to someone in support or anything like that, they are metric employees. Um, we don't outsource any of that. So um, metric focus, so like I mentioned, um, we've been doing this uh, for, for several years now and we've acquired a lot of different jurisdictions. Um, we really just wanna kind of use this slide as a, as a way to showcase the fact that we've, we've, we have a lot of experience in this industry. We, we've done this with plenty of other jurisdictions we, and we're here to partner with you all and make sure you have the support and the training you need. Um, one of the things we will continue to harp on is the support feature of metric reaching out to them also using the training pieces as well i will also note here that better than 99.9 uh, percent .9 uptime so um, very few outages that we've had and if they are uh, if they are planned we will announce that beforehand so what is metric uh, so we're a compliance management tool a uh, reporting tool is really what we are um, we're cloud hosted, so the main point here I want to drive into home is you don't have to buy any hardware in order to use metric. All you need is a computer and an internet connection, and you're able to log in and record everything you're doing. Um, okay, so like I mentioned, we're a regulatory reporting tool. So at the point, purpose of uh, going through this is just to kind of explain the difference, because you may have heard some of these other uh, terms and just trying to differentiate between what metric does and what other systems may do. Uh, so we're a regulatory tracking tool. So realistically, you're just reporting in what you're using, and it's only applicable to, can, uh, to marijuana and uh, marijuana products, right? So you're just tracking everything that's marijuana. Um, we're not an MRP system, which is a materials resource and planning system so we're not tracking water we're not tracking electricity things like that um, that would be a, a, a function of another system um, that may integrate with us or an ERP system where you're keeping track of your finances and along the lines of the same things that an MRP system might do as well um, so that's really just the purpose of, of this information all right so what makes up metric so it's a web application as web services You've got uh, the industry side, the regulatory side. Uh, you're going to be dealing with the industry side. That all goes into the web UI. We also have uh, the third-party vendors, which goes into the API. The API goes into that system as well, and that all sums up to the database, uh, which is where the reporting comes in. Um, that's where the, the state is able to um, pull out the, the information they need to, to be effective regulators. There you go. Um, how is metric built? So the way we think of metric is uh, an office building, right? The industry in as a whole is that office building. It's owned by uh, OMA, who's the regulators, um, and then you will have your licenses, which would be 
uh, consider consider your your office space within that building, right? You you're able to go in there and set it up as you need to, um, and then just think of us as the uh, and then the hallways kind of that's the transfer piece right there, and then uh, as metric we're kind of the the facilities maintenance. Uh, staff, we're there to make sure the hallways get swept up. We're making sure everything's working. The waters, you know, waters, you're not losing water, electricity, things like that. So that's kind of how you can think about um, think about that. How does metric work? All right. So, like I said, there's two different sides uh, of the of the system. There's the government agency side, which is for the regulating. Um, for the most part, that's really just pulling information out. They're not really entering anything in there. The only thing that might be going in to your side, which you would see is the licensing, which is uh, integration with Authentia, which you may be aware of. Um, so that goes in, everything else is coming out from them uh, because you're the ones that are actually entering what's going on here. So you're gonna look at here at the industry side, um, we're gonna be mainly focused on the package inventory here, but everything starts with the cultivations. Um, it goes from immature, uh, plant batches to a tagged vegetative plant, um, which gets moved to a flowering stage and then harvested. And then once it's harvested, it's packaged. Um, and then from there, it's uh, able to be tested uh, and transferred to a facility like yours. Um, and then you can repackage or infuse uh, or, you know, um, or combine it into other packages. And then you can um, send it to a dispensary for sale. All right, set up a personal profile. Um, so if you haven't done so already, um, in order to get credentialed in the system, you will need a uh, key admin or an owner to take the new business training. Um, so just to be clear here, that's a little bit different than what we're doing here. The new business training you can sign up for on the scheduler, which is on the metric.com slash Oklahoma partner page. Um, there is a scheduler there. Uh, we do offer one a day there. Uh, or if you want to sign up for the new LMS system, Metric Learn, uh, you will be able to take those on demand. Um, and then like I said, there's a requirement for, for the admin or the owner to take it. Whoever's reaching out for credentials needs to take that training. Um, once you do, um, once you do take that training, you can reach out to our uh, support team and you'd indicate, you know, this is my name, this is my license number, this, uh, this is from I'm requesting credentials. Uh, and then they will send you, um, we'll verify that everything's uh, good to go. And then we will send you what we call a welcome email, which you'll see there. Um, and it'll be a link there that you click and then you set up your profile. Uh, there, which you can see on the bottom. Um, so you create confirm password. Um, one thing to note there is that it uh, the, the link does expire in 24 hours. So if you don't use the link when it gets sent to you, all you need to do is reach out to support um, and they will resend the link. Um, so from there, um, and all of that is actually outlined in the uh, uh, next steps uh, document, which is available um, in the Metric Knowledge Center, uh, as well as it was posted to, to Metric as well. Um, so there's a next step document and there's a beginning inventory guide, which um, gives you a little bit more detail on, on both of those things. Um, so once you uh, set up your personal profile, um, your CV credentials, you're going to add in facilities under there. So if you have multiple facilities um, that you're going to be responsible for, you don't need to create a separate login for each one. You just have to add in the, all the facilities underneath your uh, admin account, and then you can actually add in all your employees um, under multiple licenses at once. Uh, so that's why you should always have the facilities first. So you're not having to re-enter those employees each time. Um, and so for each facility, you'll enter the employees, the strains, uh, the items, and locations there. Um, so like I said, uh, a few of those outside of the items, you're able to actually add those across multiple facilities at once. So again, why it's important to add the facilities first. Um, so when you're setting this up, you're gonna you're gonna set up your uh, item categories. So the item categories are actually what um, you select from. Um, and there's actually a few more than that. And if you want to take a photo, the, the next slide has all of them actually listed out. Uh, but this will dictate, you know, the information that's required to be entered when you are entering those items into metric. So we're gonna talk to the admin here. Uh, so when I, like I stated, when you create the items, it's important to uh, be descriptive with the item names. You wanna make sure they're, they're easily identifiable. Um, so if you are potentially, and I'd also break out if you have denominations, different denominations. So if you have a pack of gummies that's a five pack versus a three pack, you should differentiate those in the item name. It's a really helpful for not only um, for the regulators who are coming in to make sure everything looks correct, but also for your also employees to be able to know exactly what they're pulling from and what they're packaging. Um, I, oh, sorry, did I, I was not quiet. 
Yes, exactly. So I'd say be descriptive with the item names. So so if you have uh, different, if the same type of item, uh, say you have blueberry gummies, uh, but you have a five pack and a three pack, those should be separate items because you want to be able to differentiate that. Because um, as we'll talk through this, the package tags are actually associated to batches or lots. It's not on each individual package. So you want to be able to differentiate the two. Um, also, you cannot combine different items into one item. So like no gift baskets or anything like that. Those have to be kept separately. Um, just things to note there. And so this is the list of item categories that are available in metric um, right now. You'll probably be so these you'll probably have access to almost all of these, I believe, uh, because you're going to be doing a lot of the uh, infused products, which you see there. OK, locations. Um, so when you create locations, uh, this is going to be uh, fairly more straightforward for you. Um, the locations are just going to be the rooms that they're going to be kept in. Um, you can be more granular than that if you would like. Um, so if you want to, if you have a large room that has different sections to it, you can also make that more granular. If you, um, but That's a business decision if you would like to do that. Um, so. OK, so now we're going to kick over to the uh, to the uh, demo environment here and we're going to kind of walk through what we just did. Um, so uh, quickly here, we'll just kind of show you what it's uh, what it's like to log in here. So let's log out and then we'll log back in. So just a note here, if you don't remember your username, you can recover it as long as that your email address is associated to that login. Uh, same with the reset your password. If you have it set up, you'll just have to answer your security question. Um, if you use the first time you can use your login key directly from here, but it's a little bit easier just to use the link that is in the email. Um, you can also sign up for training, and the training videos are also available here right on the home page. Um, but once you uh, log in here, you will see on the top right here, um, if you hit that little arrow there, that will be where the ad facilities is. Uh, I don't have that access actually in here, um, but you can add the facilities here. Uh, you just have to enter that facility license number, and then you will get it added uh, similar to if you uh, if you exit out of that, you see there. Exactly. So if you see the um, the list of facilities uh, in this drop down, you can switch between them under the same login. Um, so it is a little bit of a single user sign on situation. So we're going to go to a processor license. Uh, we're going to go to admin. And we're going to add employees here. All right, so you'll see here uh, a lot of different uh, licensees here. You're going to be adding unlicensed employees for the most part, unless they're transporter li uh, if they're licensed. Um, so if they're transporters, uh, they will have a license number that can be added. Um, so, but if they are not transporters, they would be. Uh, you would just you would enter their first name, their last name, their email address, phone number, uh, and then selecting a home. There, I will just note if you are selecting a home. Make sure that they have access to what is uh, supposed to be their home page, because otherwise it'll it's giving a spinning wheel here. Um, but you can see here, you can actually add, add um, employees to multiple facilities here on the right hand side. And then um, for packages, uh, so and then the one thing I draw attention to for um, the, as far as permissions go, for the most part, the one you really want to be careful with is, is the employees and who's managing those. Because uh, if you have access to manage employees, you have the ability to not only change people's permissions, you have the ability to lock people out. We've seen, can't tell you how many times we've seen a disgruntled employee that's let go, doesn't lose their access to metric, and then they, and they are able to kick out everyone out except for them, and then you disrupt your business for the day or two days. So just something to keep in mind. Um, outside of that, um, you have the ability to, and, and to prevent that, what you can do is you can actually disable them or lock them. So locking is a temporary measure. You can, but you can lock them indefinitely. Um, but that's usually more for. Um, give me a second. We'll get through it. Some last answer questions here. Um, you can lock them, um, or you, and then you can unlock them. And then if you want to disable them permanently, all the way to the right hand side is that little trash can icon. That's a disable. So, and then if you go over to all of them. So if you want to disable them for all of the facilities that they're in that you have associated to. You can do it that way as well. So um, that's pretty much it for uh, employees. Uh, you said you had a question. So are, you, are they going to have access to metric? 
Yeah, so if they so uh, actually go back to add unlicensed users, so employees. So you're gonna want to add them if they need access. You have to make sure that enable online access to this facility is enabled. You can add them without online access as well. So if you just want to have a roster of the people that you have that are working there, um, that's that's one way to do it. Um, it's just um, so the question was if they are 1099s uh, individuals that um, are not technically employees, uh, you would still need to add them to metric if they need access to. It. If they're gonna be entering anything in, they're gonna have to be added. No, 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 no. If they're, if they're a transporter license, um, they do not need to have access to your account. Um, that would, there would be a separate process. So you, you would create the, we'll get into the transfer, you create a transfer, um, and then they'll be able to see it on their end when you create it, if you list them as the transporter license. Uh, that'd be a question for uh, OMMA if they, if they, those people need to be listed as employees. Um, if they, do they, do, do all employees, uh, whether 1099 or anything, if they, even if they don't have to have access to metric, do they need to be uh, added as employees? Uh, I think OMA, so the question is, do I have to list them if they're, they're not access to metrics and they're 1099, they're not an employee? And I think OMA said that that's fine. You don't have to add them. Are they operating in this particular process or license? Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so they they would. Uh, I'll get to that question in a second. So the question was, uh, if they do have a transportation in, an individual transportation license, um, can they? You'd, you'd add them as a licensed employee. So if we can exit out here, um, you go to add license. So they will actually have a license number, and all you do is you enter that employee license number in the email address, and then all of that information will populate. So you don't have to enter actually enter in all their information. Um, they will use that as their login. So that's that's one way to go. About. All right, um, and Rob, you said you had a question. Okay, yep. Yeah. So um, the question was, uh, if you have a transporter license or uh, individual license, um, you would add them as a licensed employee, um, and you'd enter that license number that they have as an individual into the system and uh, their email address. In that, that will actually be their license number will actually be what they use to log in. Um, so if they're unlicensed and they don't have a transporter uh, license provided by OMA that they'll, the system will generate a login for them. So because we don't have a, a license number to go off. But um, I think that I think it was all the questions. Um, any other, any, anything else as far as the admin and adding employees, adding, you know. Um, okay, so moving on, we will go to now adding locations. So um, realistically, you, you will probably have a lot fewer here, but you may want to have uh, maybe a potentially a uh, processing, uh, you know, processing room or something like that. Um, again, the it's locations, but just think of it really in this sense as rooms. Um, unless you want to be more granular about like a vault or something like that, and you want to be a little bit more um, organized as far as where exactly things are. Um, the key is, is you just got to know where things are really. Um, so when Noma comes in, they're able, you're able to direct them exactly where they need to go. Um, that the, the the better you keep track of that, the faster those inspections are going to go. Um, all right, so you're going to create that location, and it's going to be default location type. That's all you're going to need to use. Um, and then after that, you add your locations. You go down, and you uh, you will uh, create your strains. Um, so this is really only needed if you uh, have if you're creating packages of um, if you're creating packages of flour that you would need items for. So it it's really pertains to the items of flour. Uh, or shake trim by strain. If there, if you have un, there's the ability to have shake trim that doesn't require a strain. So if that's if you if you're doing that, then you don't need a necessarily need a, uh, a strain on there. But um, so we'll go. So we have a couple in there that you can use. Um, if, but we'll go to the admin tab here and uh, go to items. So um, when you're going in here, you're going to add all the items you're going to be making. Um, so first of all, if you have, uh, if you want, you're going to want package, uh, package waste is one that you'll want uh, to create right out the gate. That's going to be how you're going to categorize the, the packages of waste that you're going to have to transfer to the waste disposal facilities. Um, anything with, uh, so we have a Blue Dream cartridge here. You see that. Um, additionally, you know, if you have uh, different intermediary oils, uh, BHO oils, concentrates, things like that. Um, you can add those here, um, then definitely the final products you also want to have. So we're going to add a couple here. Um, we're going to add a, uh, a shake trim. 
and then we can actually add in uh, one of the strains here. So we can go, so you'll notice here there's uh, shake trim uh, by strain and shake trim. So we actually already have a shake trim generic already made here. Um, so I'll show you shake trim by strain, go to strain and Pineapple Express. So we'll go shake trim dash Pineapple Express. And then the unit of measure, which would be uh, grams. And then also too, just a note here with the plus sign, uh, you're actually able to add multiple items uh, at a time. Um, if you uh, notice here in the template, we are going to be doing separate ones, so that's not going to be as uh, useful. But if you were creating all a lot of edibles at once, you could just enter that all in. Um, uh, at once and check that box, but we're going to actually make a batch of cookies, right? So uh, typically with the edibles, we'll uh, see that you indicate what it is, the milligrams per per uh, unit, and then um, and then we'll also, uh, and then if there's a denomination of packs, that's also, she should be split up there as well. All right, so that'll be edible, count, weight, and then you'll see here, so uh, based on what your category is, that's gonna dictate what information needs to be entered. So in this case, uh, the unit of measure would be uh, each is, uh, unit weight, um, say they're uh, two grams each, and this is just like the, the actual weight of what it is, so not necessarily, per unit. Um, so not necessarily the how much is in it, but just the units. Um, and then ingredients as well, so flour, sugar, things like that. Uh, and then obviously the, uh, the concentrate, things like, um, uh all right uh, so we created those um now we uh we've got everything set up and we're ready to go um so we'll flip back to uh and we'll flip back to the uh presentation now so tags and track we'll talk tags okay so just to clarify if every employee that will be using metric needs to be added in there um from, uh, but if they no, do not have access to met, if they don't need access to metric, they do not need to be in there. Okay, so no shared logins. Yes, yes, that's a, that's a key here, and that's actually a benefit to to you all as well to be able to see who's doing what in the system. And we'll get into kind of what that looks like as well uh, with the reports as well as the um, the history there. Yes, so be, so be so whatever the unit is. So if it's a five pack, that's one unit. Then the, the weight for the for for that five pack for each unit. So basically, it's a way because it's in each. So you know, okay, if there's 50 five pack cookies. So the question is, um, with the unit weight, it should be the weight of the individual unit. So if you have a five pack of cookies, uh, it should be the weight of that five pack of cookies. And that the reason for that is that we're able to uh, know, okay, if there's 50 each is in here and they're each weighing, you know, you know, two ounces, um, then you know it should equal what you know, 50 times, so 100 ounces, yeah. Um, so um, we're gonna keep it, keep moving here. So the tagged inventory. So there's two types of, of tagged inventory and metric. There's plants and there's packages. Uh, you will not really have any need to know too much about plants um, unless you have a, a grower license as well. Uh, but plants are uh, attracted to the immature vegetative and flowering phases. Uh, and then those actually transition for uh, all of uh, that they're used throughout the growth cycle here. Um, then it goes into a harvest batch. And then from there, they package it into um, their uh, their flower and, and shake trim packages. Uh, so keep. All right. So this kind of shows you that chain of custody I was just explaining. Uh, you get your immature plant, the vegetative plant, flowering plant that goes into a harvest batch. Um, and then it'll go to a package here. Um, so. The, you're going to really be getting it as the package. Um, they'll transfer that in. Um, we'll also touch on the external transfer process as well and how that works. That's the beginning inventory um, functionality as well. Uh, just so we're clear here, um, when you do receive packages in, you do not need to re-tag that uh, just to, with, to make it sure match yours. We track it based on that number to your license and that package tag stays consistent throughout. So you do not need to re-tag unless you are you know, repackaging in some form of capacity. So uh, the question is, is if we receive, if it, a dispensary you receive in a, uh, or 
or a processor, either way, if you're receiving a package in, that information for the item would transfer in. Um, so you would be able to see all that item information. Now, if there is some reason that you wanted to change the information, you would have to create a new item um, in, in your system. Um, but if you're just repackaging, um, you don't actually have to create an item for that. There's uh, some functionality here we'll show you in a second uh, called the same item functionality, which actually makes it so you don't have to create um, items from other facilities uh, to make to repackage. Um, uh, yes, you could. Yeah, no, yeah. So the question is, is uh, if we wanted to rename um, to keep the brains consistent um, coming in, yes, you would be able to create those items. So you would have to create create those items in that case. Um, and then you would, would basically, you'd have to repackage into that. Um, so uh, using system, that's the only way to change the item name um, there. So uh, we'll continue on here. Uh, so tags. Um, so the package tags, which is what you're going to be really using here, um, are 25 cents uh, a piece. Uh, they are on the bottom right here. Uh, they have a testing facility name, uh, or sorry, they'll have your facility name. Uh, they'll have your facility license number, uh, and then they'll have that unique identifier, that 24-digit uh, uh, alphanumeric code. Uh, that's actually what's encoded in that barcode, as well as what's encoded in the RFID itself. Um, so it's trimodal in the sense of, of what is available information uh, from the tag. Uh, for the package tags, they actually have a peel and stick adhesive backing um, that you can use if you want to put that on, on packages. Um, and then the bottom is actually a tearaway. So the RFID piece is in the top. Um, if you wanted to, uh, big use case we see sometimes with the dispensaries, they'll keep the, uh, the store, uh, they'll keep the, the ripoff tag with the barcode out front. And then they'll have the, the package in the vault with the with the actual RFID tag. That's one way of doing it. We've seen some places that will put the tearaway one on the on the transfer manifest as well. There's, uh, but that's really up to you as far as how you want to use those that tag because that's the reality is, is what the the tag with the RFID piece is the most important thing that has to stay and remain with the package at all times. Tags are one-time use only, so um, they're not reusable. Um, but uh, the and then I think we're good to. No, no, okay. So, okay, yeah. So the purpose of the RFID here is uh, is reality uh, is to make things easier um, in, for for everyone in the sense of the, the regulatory side. So uh, the RFID piece uh, makes it um, line of sight, not directly uh, on it. So the barcode, you know, you have to be right on top of it, whereas the RFID has a range of about uh, 10 to 15 feet. So they're able to actually walk through, it's specifically in the cultivation, especially they're able to walk through the rows and see that. But the, the RFID piece is, you know, when it's not GPS tracking, it's it's RFID. So um, the, and then the, in the, yeah, Yep, correct, and check that off and make it a little bit faster, more efficient. So it's it's better for them. It's also better for you. So you're not, um, you're not having to uh, spend uh, have them all day uh, going through every single package you have. <laughs> yeah. So so the question is is um, you know is there any way to print onto the tag? So there actually the back does have the ability you can write on them, um, which uh, you've indicated. Uh, but the the RFID tags. So the information is all encoded in in the system. So. Um, Generally, uh, it's kind of a business decision on how you want to handle um, the the writing on there. Uh, we've seen other you know cultivations as well, uh, cultivations as well. They they will um, have charts and graph or uh, pictures or on dry erase boards, kind of showing the different breakdowns. Um, the reality is is that um, when the inspectors are going through a lease, they will be able to see you know they'll be checking that off and they'll be able to know exactly what tag the information is when they're going through the readers. Um, we'll talk a little bit too, there are some integrators that are doing some things with RFID as well that are more industry fa facing as well. So we'll we'll talk about that, that's more towards the end, but we can talk packages now. Okay, so any uh, amount of marijuana infused product that may be sold, processed, or transferred uh, must be placed in one or more containers, each having a unique tag created metric. So think of the metric tag uh, as the lot. So if you have Get to in a second. Um, think of it as a lot. So if you have, for instance, uh, you know, you have three boxes of product. This is all the same batch, right? Um, as long as they're kept together and they have the the package tag in there within the uh, limits uh, of the OMA regulations as far as the sizes, um, you can keep those kind of. They can be in. They don't have to be in the same exact bag, right? They can be in a container um, as long as that tag remains with the entire lot and they're all kept together. Um, and then again, anything for transfer has to have a package tag. 
Um, and then we'll also kind of talk through um, how you can repackage a package into a new package, um, as well as the production batch process. So, all right, so we're gonna flip back over uh, to the uh, demo site here, and we're gonna talk through packages a little bit. Um, so when you go to your packages here, well actually, okay, so go to active. So you'll see here if we had, for instance, this brownies, 40 milligrams, we have 495 each. Uh, so there's a large, large batch there. Um, we want to repackage that. So we can actually take that, create a new package, say we're sending off 100 uh, to two different facilities. So we're going to actually have to, so what you can do is you can create two packages at once. So you hit this little plus button here. Anytime you see that, that's the ability to, uh, to do multiple things at once here. Um, so you'll enter in all this information in the template and actually it'll filter down here. Um, so you want to make sure you get the, yep, so get the tag. So anytime you have that magnifying glass here, select that, check the box, and then you'll see that filters down there. Same with the location, uh, item. And then we'll use the same item there because they're going to be, we're just repackaging here, remember. And then unit measure. And then we'll we'll need to make sure we uh, select uh, the same package for the uh, for the so the package what's coming so the, what's on the right hand side that's what's coming out of the source package so that's the source package and what's coming out of it um, so we'll just make sure to type in six four probably yep copy and paste and then you'll check that and then we'll actually want to put uh put the quantity in there as well uh, so say we're taking a hundred out of each. And then when you actually see here the unit of measure to make sure that it matches um, what is coming out. So make that each is. So it has to be each is for the unit of measure. I'll sum it. I'll check that. There you go. All right. Um, package date today. Check that. Um, and then we should, everything should be filtered in here. So we'll scroll down here and, uh, accept it. So we'll create the package. All right. All right. You will see here, you'll, you have your new packages here of those brownies, 40 milligrams. Um, so just real quick, I want to touch on a few things that are pretty consistent throughout metric. And then I'll get to your question in the back there. Um, so if you see these three dots here anytime on any of these screens that's columnar sorting so you can actually filter um for you can change the columns that you're seeing here if there's information that you want to see um that's not included it might be here or if you want to get rid of item information you don't need uh to see you can do that uh adjust columns accordingly uh and then for the filters you have the ability to um do uh, for this is the tag number so it's really just starts with ends with equal to not equal to but if you are going to for instance items contains uh or item category you can do it that way uh, and then you can also add in two filters at once and or um and that's that's the culminar sorting and then the last thing i'd note is the uh carrots here on the left hand side Anytime you see that, that'll give you the drop down. So um, if results are entered, the lab test results would be here. If they were entered in a metric, obviously, uh, you know, we'll talk a little bit on the beginning of inventory fraud with the transfers. Um, but that product, if it's already been tested and has uh, outside of metric and you bring it in, that will not be required to have those test results entered in a metric. There will be certain information that's outlined in the beginning inventory document uh, that you should be entering as the note for the package. Um, and then from there, um, that will be allow what the, the regulators to be able to verify those COAs um, on the on the back end. So, uh, but you'll look at the history here. That'll show you exactly what it is. So you'll see your employee. Um, that's again why no shared logins here. Uh, so you can see what the employee did, the date, and then the reported. So you'll notice there's a uh, there's two different ones. Um, that's just to kind of so there's a timestamp on everything you do in metric. So you could indicate that I packaged this yesterday but it, the system will show you that you did it, you entered that in today. Um, and then the sources, so use, there's three different ways. There's sources are user, uh, data upload, which is a CSV, which we'll touch on in a second here, uh, and then the um, and then API. So if it's API, it'll actually have the external app there listed as well. 
All right, so that's all right. So that's uh, the tags there. Uh, so and then the only thing I'll actually mention here, we I didn't mention here, is the tags. How to order those? So you go up to your admin tab. Uh, the tag orders. Uh, go to tag orders. Um, create a new tag order. Uh, we do accept. Uh, we do accept credit card and as well as check and money orders. The one thing I'll note on the check and money orders is we will not ship the tags until we receive the check or the money order. Um, so the credit cards are the recommended approach there. Um, I will note also too the facility information should be loaded in through Fidentia, so you shouldn't have to enter it all in. You can just you can copy it from the facility file, so um, makes it a little bit quicker there. Uh, you can also save your credit cards in the um, in the financials field, make things a little bit smoother as well. Um, you'll go into, and then once you'll go into your uh, ta your uh, actual tag orders here. Uh, so new, yeah, new tag orders. Um, okay, so if you order your tags here, that's where you'll receive it. Um, you'll notice once we do process it, you have the ability to receive. Do not receive your tags until you physically have them, because <laughs> uh, then you may be assigning tags that you don't actually have any possession and then you're gonna have to dig through those and, and find them later um, okay so that's the tags uh, we'll flip back over to um, the uh, presentation we'll talk a little bit about production batches uh, but before that I do want to answer that question I know you had that your hand raised earlier okay. you, you can rip it up the important part is the, the bigger piece that has the RFID that needs to go with them Yeah, I mean, we, we, we've seen that utilized in different ways. I mean, if, if there are particular ways that OMMA wants you to use them, you can. I, we've seen it used. It, it's really a, just an additional thing. But if you do give it to them with the uh, unperverted, that's where they can use it on the storefront. They can actually just keep it with the, the storefront product. So that's where we really see the package tags get kind of used that way. Okay, yeah, so the tags, uh, three to five business days, um, get those out. If you order them um, before noon Eastern time, um, they, sh they, they should get processed that day. If it's after that time, they'll get processed the next day on the three to five business days. During the, we do have expedited shipping um, for those ta for tags. We are not doing that during the beginning inventory phase, but once we get through that, you will be able to expedite your shipping there. Um, the tags also do not go bad. They will stay good. For as long as uh, as long as you have that license, that those tags will be uh, able to be used. Um, so if you order a little too many, don't worry, you'll be able to go through them. You, you will just because you have to record. You're taking that trim, and that's where we're getting. Okay, I apologize. That yes, okay, yes, yes. So oh, processed. Yeah, I think I think process was thrown in there as well. So it's processed say, uh, or repackaged. So it's a form of. Uh, so the question was. Um, do I need to tag it if it's trim that I have that I'm just going to put in? So they'd actually have to package that at the at the at the grow. So they're going to have that packaged up anyway. So that's going to get transferred in. Um, so so you'll get that. Um, so the transfer. So pretty much anything that you're going to be dealing with has to have a tag associated to it. And we're going to walk through a little bit on the uh, new uh, beginning inventory as well with the external transfer process. Yeah, so I mean, that's uh, the quite, quite probably a question for the for the OMMA as far as uh, you know what steps that has to be. Generally speaking, it's it's usually that just the physical inventory has to match. But if there are processes that take multiple days, that'd be a question for OMMA on how they want to process that. Um, so we are going into so we're gonna jump ahead here. Processors. So. Packages and intermediate processes. So for incoming packages and intermediate processes, such as making a concentrate, you're going to pull from the existing existing packages and create a new package for the concentrate. Um, we're going to be using what's called a production batch. Um, and then you can actually take that and then use a new production batch and create other products. So a, a helpful example here, uh, we'll show it here. This thing is not born today. Um, so creating a production batch. So on the right hand side here, similar to what we're doing with the repackaging, the difference here is that production batch button, which we'll show you uh, in the demo site. Um, that's really what is indicated there. Anytime the, the, pack, the product is changing form, um, uh, whether physically or chemically, it needs to be a production batch. The reason for this is this is how um, we differentiate what needs to be tested again before it gets transferred. So um, basically, everything, the test results will follow a package until it 
is in a production batch, at which point the system knows this is a completely different product. It needs to be tested before it can be transferred. Now, if you are going through different iterations, you don't have to test it every single iteration within the processor. So if you're making that crude and you're making the distillate and then you're making, you know, you really need to test whatever the uh, product is going, that's going to be actually reaching the, the facility. What I will say is just in general, um, if you are concerned about anything as far as testing it, you may want to test it beforehand. If you're, if you're, you're but I know you're a cultivator that has the process, so you're sure you trust your uh, soap supplier. Um, so we're going to keep uh, keep rolling here and kind of show you a visual of this. So uh, you're actually able to take multiple uh, packages of trim and combine it into one uh, production batch there. So as you as you mentioned here, so you take it, uh, you know, four bags of trim, you make it into a batch of crude, um, and then from the batch of crude you can um, make you know multiple other production batches directly from that so those are you know you can you, the concept is many to one one to many is really what we were rely on here and then we track all of that throughout the course of the the life cycle there um, so when you have the production batch uh, there and then uh, so you'll see here and then you'll see those production batches are actually different type of product types and then you manifest that over as just separate packages um, and they all have their own tags here um, so now we'll jump over to the uh, to the demo environment. We'll show you what that production batch process looks like. All right. So first off, we're going to go into we'll show the external transfer process here. We'll get into to regular transfers as well, but the external transfer we just want to show you that. So if you are bringing in, say, you're bringing in some Shake Tram uh, packages, um, go to incoming, new transfer. And you would uh, select beginning inventory transfer. You have to put a phone number in here. Uh, planned route, I would just put beginning inventory transfer because you're, you're just bringing that in. You're not actually coming from anywhere. Um, and this is all outlined in the beginning inventory document as well. Uh, you'd put it, and then for the package, uh, you'd put in uh, the, the item name. So in this case, we're going to just do, uh, and if you hit the magnifying glass, you get the pick list. It's called what I'm showing as well. So if you want to dig through it. Uh, also, too, if you X out of this, uh, you can actually do autocomplete. So there's a shake trim item. So if I just start typing shake trim, um, I could do Pineapple Express and I bring that in. Uh, package date would be today. I'd actually add multiple, and I can add multiple packages at once as well. Um, if you are using an integrator, they have the ability to create these manifests as well through the API. Uh, all you would have to do is go into metric and receive them and assign the tags. So that's the only steps you would actually have to do if you are using an integrator for this process. Uh, you gotta put the quantity in there. So um, say 200 grams. Uh, <clears throat> and then if we, uh, yeah, so we'll add, we'll add a, uh, yeah, you can remove line two. So if you only did one, but uh, you, I think there's a trim package or something. Oh, no. Shake. Nope, that's it. Okay, so maybe we'll bring in a couple of different packages of shake trim, uh, Pineapple Express, but. Because it may be from separate batches. So, but if there, if you do have shake trim packages that aren't strain specific, you can also use those as well. Register the transfer, and then um, once you do register, you will uh, you have the ability to edit, complete, and void, which you'll see uh, uh, the edit and the void you'll see on the license transfers. But for this one's the complete that we'll be using right now. Um, and then you will have to enter the tag numbers here. So this is the point where you'll have to tag it. So this part you will definitely have to go into metric to do. Uh, you will simply tag it and then the, give the location. So you uh, indicate that, plus put, you know, put in a vault of some sort. Transfer vault, package vault, either one works. And then you'll create that package. Um, yeah, if you, uh, <clears throat> the reject is functionality that's available through licensed and the regular transfers. I don't see any reason why you'd be rejecting a transfer you're bringing to yourself. I'd rather, you'd probably be better off just editing or avoiding it. Uh, so that, that'll be, this is just the transfers we're going to get to that in a second. The question of the production batch number, we're going to get to that in a second. Um, cool. 
Correct. So this is the beginning inventory. Yes. Yeah, so this is this is how you get product that you already have on hand, tagged and into metric. So you can then start recording what you're doing with it. Yes, that's correct. If you have product on hand, you will have to you have to enter all that in through the beginning inventory phase. All right. So we're going to register complete the transfer there. And you'll see that that gets grayed out. And if I go to my packages, active, and you'll see um, if we go to date, that'll be an easy one here. So, yeah, so you'll see that uh, we've got the uh, products here. So now we're going to take these two packages and we're going to make a production batch out of it. So we're going to select the two of them. We're going to click new packages. Um, and then uh, we're going to indicate how much we're taking out. So we're going to take 200 grams from each of them. So I think they're the same amount. You'll notice here if uh, the system notices you're zeroing out a package, you actually have the ability to finish it right on the same screen. You have the ability to go back and do this. Um, the reason you finish packages is because it'll move it to the inactive tab, so you're not having to look at packages that have been zeroed out. It kind of cleans up what you're looking at here in metric. So uh, we'll finish the package here. We'll finish one of them, and then we'll show you how to do it uh, otherwise. But um, finish date here. We just want to put that in. And then uh, go for new for new tag. Um, you again select it. Uh, location. Package vault. And then. And then item is not going to be the same item. We're going to create a, I think we have a CO2 oil that we have ability to use, uh, intermediary oil. Um, and then we will indicate the quantity here of what came out of it. So it shouldn't be each. It should be grams, I believe. Yep, there you go. Uh, no, we don't want 400 grams. You're not making 400 grams of oil with 400 grams of flour. That's not going to work. Uh, so we would put in, uh, say we had 40 grams here. So which means 40. Um, today, and then the production batch indicators is where you enter the production. So once I select that production batch indicator, that's where you enter your production batch number. Um, that's something that you uh, keep on your records. It's an, an also a, an, uh, an informational field that the labs will use to track it as well. Um, so just make sure that matches exactly what you know your internal processes are. But that's uh, that's entered by you all. Um, and this is also where you can indicate you're remediating a product. So if you uh, do are aware if you have uh, failed, you know, chick trim or something like that, uh, that failed for mold potentially, uh, you are able to, you know, use a high high heat hydrocarbon based solvent extraction process to kill off all that mold and remediate that way. So um, if you are doing something like that, you would just indicate you're remediating it as well. At this point, um, we are not doing it, um, so we're not going to select it. But that's just uh, one thing to remind. Uh, to note there. So we're going to create this package. Oh, intermediate oil is each base. So let's use a different item then. Uh, is there is there BHO oil or CO2? I think there was one in there. Uh, maybe ash oil. Yeah, try that. Okay, perfect. All right, so uh, we have our hash oil here. And then we, and that's, you'll notice here, Production batch number on the far right, that'll show up. Um, that'll give you an indicator of what the production batch number is. Um, once you start, if you started to repackage out of this and moved it, there's a source production batch field as well. That's not immediately, um, it's not by default showing, but that's actually how you'll be able to know what production batch that actually came from. Uh, you said to clean up what you're saying. No, so it's, yeah, so if you, so if you pull all, of, uh, as the question is, um, why are you finishing packages? So once you, if you will, so actually if you look here, that, that grayed out one right there, it's, it's zero. No, it's not finished yet. So it's actually, it's grayed out because it's at zero. And then you'd actually select it and you finish it. And then it, it moves it to the inactive tab so that you, it's not cluttering up your. Yeah, but again, um, as you, if, if you are zeroing it out, you can actually just do it all in one step. So that's what we did with the other package. Um, yeah, so that's the purpose of, of finishing those. And also, too, if you, uh, if you have, you know, once you get, once you are in business for a while, you might, if you don't finish out those packages, it might start to be a lot here. Um, that can also degrade actually your system performance. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So there, there is. Uh, that's. Um, so we created the hash oil. 
Um, next, we're going to create and make a few different other items out of that. So we're going to go new package. Um, and then we're actually going to uh, use the little plus button again. Uh, and then we're going to kind of fill in this information, right? So you're going to have, um, you're going to want to do the, you know, 73, copy and paste that up to there. And say we're taking uh, 20 grams from each of these. Filter that down. Um, and then you will uh, see, you know, enter the tag sequence. We've done this before. Uh, location. We'll put that in the room, processing room. Uh, and then item is going to be different, so we're not going to use that one. Um, but we will want to do package date and production batch. Click those off. So uh, there's no item in the, the template. We'll enter that in below because they're going to be different, right? Um, so go to the package date, just add that as today, and then also the production batch indicator and, and check that box. So that'll actually, um, there are gonna be different production batch numbers. So again, we're not gonna fill that down. So you scroll down here. Uh, we're gonna make one batch of cookies and then uh, do the, the pineapple cookies that we have. Uh, we'll put the quantity here as uh, say we're making 20, 20 grams, five pack. Uh, maybe say we are making, I don't know, 40 of them. 40 works. Uh, and then uh, you'd put a production batch number here as well. So we'll say uh, maybe, a, maybe a PC, you know, O2 or something like that. And then we'll scroll down here. We'll do the same thing here. We'll do a vape cartridge. I believe we have an item for that. Or cartridge. Yep. Um, <laughs> Uh, the item, so we'll say maybe that's uh, 20, 20 each is because you're the one gram each. So I'd say for the cartridges, you do want to have the amount there as well. Um, as far as the denomination, then production batch, yeah. Um, and then we'll create that. And then actually, so in this case, there's a finishability. So the system recognizes that you're taking 20 grams from each of it, so you can actually just finish it right here. So you'll notice it does the same thing on both sides. You're all set. You'll create the package, and um, you'll notice that 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 we now have those, and then that the package that was zeroed out disappears. Um, so that's the, at a high level, the, the kind of the demonstrating the one to many, many to one. And now I will take some questions. Okay, it's not done on the same day. So the so the key is is that the, the physical inventory at the end of the day has to match what's in metrics. So those would be separate production batches. So. so it's a separate batch. Correct. Yes. So I would have to make every single dummy for that batch. Uh, so that's a question for the OMMA. Uh, yeah, so I mean that's uh, we'll, we can talk, we can take that, I take that back. But I mean that's that's how it's designed. So it's it has to your inventory is a match. But if it's multi-day, um, that's a question for OMMA if we want to if they want to allow for multi-day uh, processing jobs. So yeah, so we can we can. So she's she's asking about. Uh, so the question is is about. Um, production batches, if they are doing, you know, uh, multiple lots over, or the same lot of the same product over multiple days, um, if they have to separate those out by day for the production batches. So the lot number would be your package tag number. So the package tag identifier, that's this tag number, that, that's your, that, that's your lot number. Yeah. Uh, so the question was about lot numbers, uh, just for everyone at home. Uh, the lot number um, is the package tag number. So that, that first column, that's your, actually what the lot number is. So we'll, we'll, we'll have to take that one back. So that's a great question. Uh, I saw a hand up in the front here. So, so, so you, well, yeah, so, so it, it, it's really dependent on if you're trans. So if you're transferring to six different facilities, you will need to Add a t you create a, create a new package for each of those when you're transferring it. Um, but if the yeah, so so what and we'll get into how to submit test. Uh, that'll be the next thing we'll hit is yes, yeah, so, so, yeah. So you you'll have to uh, you'll have to break that out by by um, package lots. Um, so the question is is if they're um, you're transferring to several different facilities, how do you break that out? You will have to create new packages from 
uh, the initial production batch package. Um, so you, we'll get into the testing, but you'd want to test the production batch passage, and then from once it's passed, you would have to create new packages um, for those because you have to transfer it with the tag that's going to. You can't split up. Yeah. So. It's, well, well, if you're breaking it up to send it to different facilities, you have to, you you would have to create new packages, because we'd have to, you'd have to break it up and in, in, in indicate what the package, the different packages are, because you have to transfer. You're gonna, you're not, you're. The question is for transfers. If you are transferring it, you would need to have separate tags for each of the different um, lots that you're shipping out. Um, I saw. I I I want to. Oh. So we are going to get into transfers next. That's, that's where we're going. Um, uh, actually, Rob, do you have some questions from the? Uh... Okay, perfect. All right, so we're going to dive into uh, submitting for the testing piece, and then we are uh, going to get, uh, get get going here. Uh, so I appreciate all the questions, but we're going to have to hold. I think I, I'll answer yours, but then we have to hold the rest of the questions till the end. You would have to create the new package because that the, again the production batch is how you indicate that it severs the uh, severs the um, the connection to the test results correct. You'd put that in the, you'd put that you'd put no you'd put that in the note. Um, so that's in the beginning of inventory guide. So anything that's already been tested, you put. Okay. Okay. So yeah. So we'll uh, I'll I'll follow up with our support line and make sure we're we're not giving out the wrong information. But yeah, that should be. The way it works out is that it should be getting, I mean, it's going to say not submitted when it's coming in if it's already been tested. That's going to be, um, I would say, do, can you, are you able to at least send them the COAs? I would say that's probably, so that that should be what you're, uh, if, if I'm a dispensary, that's what I would be looking for personally. Um, so we do have a hard stop here in 20 minutes here, so I do want to get through this quickly. Um, so the new transfer, so really quickly here, you will uh, need to test this. So we'll take the pineapple cookies and we're going to submit for testing. All right, uh, so you will indicate a new tag number here, create a new package, location, transfer, uh, item, same item, and then take from this and say you have to submit one from the 40 uh, each, yep, today. Uh, and then here's the required testing. So it is uh, an infused edible. So you'd select that one. And that what that does, that tells the test facility all the tests they have to run uh, is required. So we scroll down, submit for testing. You'll notice that the testing status has changed to submitted for testing. And you've created a new package in that little water droplet. That indicates it's a, uh, a uh, test sample package. Uh, so we're going to transfer that to the testing facility. Um, in this case, we're going to do a uh, uh, destination is going to be the lab. So again, Coleman R sorting is really helpful in this case. Uh, if you know the license number, if you know the name. Um, so in this case, it's the OK Laboratory. Planned route. Um, so just just put uh, route here. This is a required field uh, as far as the system goes. So you do have to enter something in there. No, it does not populate for you. Uh, the uh, information, the, the address and information for both the shipping and the receiving uh, facility will populate, though. Uh, so this is a lab sample transfer. Um, so we'll select that. Um, one thing I'll just note here, so a gentleman here asked about multiple destinations. Uh, wouldn't really happen for a lab sample transfer for wholesale. You can add additional destinations here. Um, and then when you generate the manifest, that will generate manifest for each of the different stops. Um, but if I'm the receiver, which we'll show in a second here, uh, so we'll get rid of that. Um, and then uh, driver's name. So you can actually uh, transport number. Um, so that would be the transporter you're using if it you're using a transporting agent within your license. Um, so there you go, transport number. Um, the driver, I don't believe we have anything configured in here for this particular one that we do. Uh, so Snoop Dogg. Uh, and then we have vehicle number right here. Uh, it's the Chevy Kush fan apparently. Um, so that so you can go into your admin menu and add transporters so they're they're the driver of information in their in their vehicles. So it actually just populates in the list there. So similar to the pick list there. Um, and then you don't have to enter a gross rate in this uh, in production, but we will enter it for here um, just to allow us to do it. So the gross weight's just the weight of the packaging plus the product. So 
probably not too much. Um, put something in there. Um, I saw a question. So let's let's create this and I'll show you what the manifest looks like and then. Because I think Kirsten said that because she can't list the production batch number, her manifest would be out of. So so so. So um, give me a second. Here. So um, we go to transfers. Go to outgoing transfers. Um, outgoing. So you'll see here the OK Lab, just like that, uh, view manifest. So you'll see here, you don't actually have to enter a lot of this information in, it just pre-populates from metric. So you see you have the source package here information, um, the uh, production batch number, uh, which it's not a production batch for um, this because it is a, a sample. We are uh, working through um, some things with the OMA to, to add a few more fields here to this, to this manifest. But uh, if you wanted to, you could write it in if you wanted to, uh, the production batch number here. Um, but again, this is for a lab sample, so it's a little different. Um, but you'll see here it has the name of the draw, uh, driver, the signature of the driver transporting, the person receiving it, their signature. Um, and then also, too, these, these licenses don't have the uh, location information, but the address of the transporter, the shipper, and the receiver will all pre-populate from the licensing system. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm, I can speak. Yeah. So, so just so, we're clear, so for everyone at home, OMA is aware that there are some some factors in here that aren't on necessarily listed on the manifest. And we are working with OMA to uh, change that, as well as they are planning on putting out some guidance on, on the manifest themselves. Um, so we'll flip back here. Uh, so that's a transfer. Uh, we'll go, go back here. So that's the outgoing if we transfer over to the uh, testing facility license here. Um, uh, go to incoming. Um, so actually, you're able to see incoming transfers as as they are created. So if you're able you're able to look and see, and you're probably aware of this, they can look and see what's coming to them before they actually get shipped. Um, so you'll see that information. You, if you go into that package, actually, if it's tested in metric, you actually see the lab results right there uh, within it. So this one obviously doesn't have that because it's submitted for testing. Um, but you'd see those lab results there. And the best part is they can up also upload a COA at the testing facility. And that can be viewed at any point uh, for anyone that's viewing that package. So it's if you're coming in a transfer, you can pull the COA directly from metric. If you're in the dispensary, you can look at those uh, COA as well um, because that, that is an ability that the, the testing facilities do have. Uh, so you'd receive that transfer here. Uh, all the way to the right here. Um, and then you select the location, and then you do have the ability to reject it uh, based on, you know, if there's a reason for it um, right there. And if you want to reject something or just a pack by package by package, you have the ability to do that. You can accept partial transfers. Yep, you can accept those, correct. Um, receive transfer here. All right, so that's transfers here. Um, we'll go through the reports. We'll go through reports really quickly here. We can go back over to the processor and, and just touch on the reports. Um, no, they can accept partial. Yes. No, they have the ability. It's by package. So if, if you want to reject one package of 10, you can reject one package of 10. Oh, yeah, you can't reject one. No, yeah, if you, if you, if you have a problem with the package, you should reject it. But it's, you know, they're not going to be able to reject one unit of one package. It's, there's 10 packages in there. You can reject one and receive the rest of the nine. Yes, correct. Uh, however, if their if their dispensary di you know does discover, like they can repackage the one that they need to get rid of and, or return it some some sort of fashion. Um, okay, so we'll flip over to reports real quick because um, I know we're running up here on time, um, and then we'll go through that, and then we will uh, kind of go through the last few items here. Um, so these are your your uh, canned reports. So again, uh, as I mentioned, you do have the ability to export um, the different tables there. Um, the different tables that you're looking at when you're in metric, but these are our canned reports. Uh, so you're able to pull uh, lab results, um, see the filters there. Uh, package adjustments is a big one there to see if uh, there's been any large adjustments or if there's one particular employee that's doing a lot of adjusting. Um, you'll look at the reasons there. Um, packages inventory, um, transfers, transfers limited, which is more to indicate uh, you can actually limit it a little bit more. And then there's the wholesale transfers, uh, which is uh, which is again the wholesale transfers uh, area there. 
All right, so flip back to the uh, presentation piece here. Um, so testing overview, um, we didn't go through quite too much here, but it starts as submitted for testing once uh, it's created. And then when the first results are entered, if they don't enter all the results at once, it'll be testing in progress. Um, and so the final results are entered, it's either a test passed or a test failed. At the point of the test failed, uh, so lab test passed, you would uh, not submitted, sample package created, submitted for testing, sample passes, test pass. Pretty simple, straightforward. And then you can transfer it to another facility, it's released for sale. Test failed. So it's not submitted, it's sample package created, submitted for testing, sample fails, it's test failed, you can remediate, you gotta just make a decision whether you want to remediate, retest, which means you think that the test results are, are, are incorrect, in which case they would have to they'd have to retest it. Um, but that's uh, or you can destroy the product or you can remediate if you're allowed. That's the questions of whether you can retest or remediate, those would be questions for OMMA if that's allowed. Uh, next slide. Um, so again, we talked about this a little bit already. We covered it. Um, it's by the it's the lot number, so you you can have a high level uh, package of a box of several different you know packages there, um, and contained a one under one package tag. Uh, again, the difference here is you do need to repackage for the different um, if you're shipping it off to different dispensaries for transfer. All right, we'll keep um, and then transfers, which we talked through already. Um, Anytime it moves from one license to another, uh, you can be rejected by package or completely. Uh, rejected package will require, or rejected package will require the originating licensee to receive that package back into their custody. Rejecting transfers, we talked about this. You can reject one package at a time. Rejection is an optional note. And receiving the rejected transfer, so when you are um, being receiving the rejected, you will have to put the rejection reason in there and put the note as well. Uh, we talked through transfers, lab test results. We talked about how you can view that uh, under the, the lab sample uh, or the package. Uh, waste disposal. Um, so we'll quickly jump into that. Uh, basically, you have to add an item for your uh, package waste of some sort. Uh, there's a waste item category that you can use. So you have to create the item for the waste. Um, and then you would uh, repackage whatever you're taking out that's wasting and put it in a package for that waste. And then you transfer that to a waste disposal facility using the waste disposal transfer type. Um, and then reports, which we went through. Integration. So we're going to home stretch here and then uh, we'll stick around for a couple minutes to answer some additional questions. I don't know if there's any questions online that we need to answer, but it uh, sounds like we're good. Okay, uh, for integrators, just uh, uh, words the wise, just make sure you use caution and seek clarity when you are looking at potentially using an integrator. We do have a list of validated integrators that are in Oklahoma on the Metric uh, Oklahoma partner page, so metric.com slash Oklahoma. Um, there's a few areas of metric that you will not be able to use, uh, access through the um, API, so the ability to receive transfers, that's one area that you will have to go into the system. The other piece I'd just recommend is that, especially at the outset, you are checking to see that metric is matching what is in your uh, your third-party system, because OMO will be uh, will be looking at the uh, metric inventory. They will not be looking what's in your third-party vendor. So just make sure you're you're validating that it's all going across. Um, our process for validating those integrators is uh, they will sign an API agreement. So let's flip here. Uh, they will uh, sign the. So we have documentation uh, for all the different. Uh, areas of metrics so uh, f that they can use. So we have all the endpoints that they're available, uh, example, JSONs, things like that. Uh, that's available at the api-ok.metric.com slash documentation. Um, and then the validation process can be found at metric.com slash Oklahoma. They'll sign an API agreement um, and then we'll, they will send that to OMMA and then we will confirm that. They'll take a class, they will get validated, we validate that they can do the things they say. Um, all the areas of validation are listed on the web page as well in our, in our third-party vendors uh, because they are able to do different things. They can pull information out. They can post information in. Um, some integrators are just get only, like they pull information out and that's it. Um, they also may not have all the different functionalities validated as well. Uh, any questions? Uh, did, you have any, did you have a question, Robert? We good? Okay. Okay. So if they have it on hand... 
they would, yes, have to use the external transfer process to bring that into their inventory. That's a question for Ome. And just so you're aware, I mean, we, uh, so uh, let me get through this one last slide and then, and then I'll open up for more questions. So support, uh, really quickly just touch on that. Um, we have the supplemental guide under the uh, support tab along with the metric user manual and user guide. Uh, additionally, we have the links for the metric learn system, which is the LMS platform you use to register for this today. Uh, we have the webinars, uh, which are available through the metric learn platform, um, as well as a scheduler there for the new business ones, uh, and our YouTube videos. Um, and then support, uh, which we run, we have uh, live support uh, Monday through Saturday. Um, I believe it's uh, 9 a.m. through 8 p.m., I believe, uh, Central Time. Uh, and then we also have the Metric Knowledge Center, so you're able to search through any old bulletins. The bulletins are also listed on the uh, Metric uh, Oklahoma web uh, partner page. Uh, but you're able to search that. You can submit requests directly on there. Uh, you can use a live chat feature. And then additionally, you can track any uh, support tickets that you would receive um, if you reach out to an email, us over our email or our phone number here, which again, that contact's listed under the support tab. Uh, but anytime you reach out to our support team, you will receive a ticket number that you can use as a reference point. Uh, whenever you reach back out to us, uh, you can give us that number. Or if you are discussing with OMA about a particular uh, case, you can you can use it as a way to document uh, different situations that you're going through to make sure that they know that you are working through those. All right. Um, we'll go to the next tab, which is thank you very much. And we'll take some questions now. All right. All right, we'll start, we'll go back to front and then we'll work our way up. That is not the case. You can do multi-stops. You just, you would, yes, yes, yes. So you would do uh, you do a wholesale transfer and then you just have multiple destinations um, for that. And the, correct, yes. So you'd, you'd have to have the packages, separate packages for it, but you can create Basically, you'd create one transfer that had all the different destinations, and then you'd generate a manifest uh, for each of those on your end. Wholesale transfer. Yeah, so if you go to new transfer here, and you see this destination, you would, you would just uh, add another destination here. So you just add multiple destinations in this way. Yep, so you'd see, you'd see that little plus button for the packages. you just uh, hit that. Yes, exactly. So you No, so you, you would be able to pull as the shipper the all the manifests, but they would only see the manifest going to them. All right, you're up next. Uh, if it's going to one processor, one tag. It'd be one tag. It's, it's just if you have different destinations, those have to be separated out by packages. Now, I, I'll get to go to her, and then I'll go to you. Yeah, as long as you're not uh, changing the formulation of it, if you're just packaging it up like that, that would just not be a production batch. You would just create a new package and indicate the uh, the items there changing. Yeah, so uh, I think there's a little bit miscue, uh, maybe a little bit of miss, uh, uh, mis uh, miscommunication on that front. We don't have the ability to upload those results. That's why the notes were going in, and that was going to be a way that we were going to be able to verify that. Uh, so I think I got an email about that from last night. So I appreciate that. Um, no, no, no. It's a great, it's a great, it's a great question. It's a great question. Yes. Yeah, so I know. And, and and from this out, from the outside, we understand that there's going to be some of these bumps in the road as part of the beginning of tutorial. That's why we're out here trying to answer your questions and making sure that you know we're giving you the support you have. Reach out to Metric Support if you have questions. As you know, you know we'll we'll get you an answer at some point. Um, if we don't have the answer right away, we will get it and we will get you a response there. Um, Okay, so you're going to create the production batch, and then you're going to create a package off of that. So the, the production batch tag will still be good, so you'll still have your core that it tests. You don't want to package anything out of the production batch until you get those test results back. Correct, yes. So you have your final product production batch that you've created, and you'll create the test sample from that. So you have, you have two packages at that point. You ship the test sample to the lab. Um, and then they enter the test results, and then those lab results will follow to the to production. But you're gonna have, you're gonna have your final product package that is the, what you're gonna be breaking up and shipping out, and then you have your lab test test sample package. Yeah, the tag numbers would be considered your lot number. That'd be your your lot or your. 
well, you're gonna have the package, you're gonna have the you're gonna have the tag first, and then you're gonna just break off and add a tag for whatever you're saying to the lab. So you, oh well, well yeah, so yeah, so yeah, similar, similar. Okay, uh, we really are running up on a hard stop here. I do appreciate everyone joining us today, uh, whether you're online or in person, um, but we are going to have to end things today. I appreciate everyone coming out. We do have another processor uh, call it again. We will be recording these um, and posting um, posting uh, them to the public here uh, following this week. And we'll also be uh, taking note of any questions that may uh, have not been answered here, and we're gonna get that information out to you as well.